Hey you, welcome back to the most beautiful, amazing Django tutorial you've ever seen in your life. Let's get started. We left off at part two. We're going to jump into part three and uh, we're going to get started. So um, if you haven't already, open up Atom. Go to where you created your My Site project, right? For me, it was in GitHub, My Site. I'm going to click open and I'm going to say whatever, open and recover state. Cool. And uh, here it is. And then if I do Command Shift P and type in terminal, my terminal pops up. Bada bam. And also make sure to do source activate my site. And we are good. Okay. So writing your first Django app part three. So what they're talking about here is they're saying, okay, like, look, you have um, every, everything in Django is essentially called a view. Okay. So for example, if you have a blog homepage, that's a view. If you have the ability to comment, like a comment action, right? That's considered a view. If you click on a blog post and it shows you its details, we refer to that as a detail page, but that's still part of the view. That's essentially what they're saying right over here. Another example of this is like, let's say I take you to Instagram. So let's say I click on clever Kazi, right? This is essentially for Instagram. And let me just plug my Instagram here too. Go follow me if you aren't already, because awesome. And uh, if you go here, right? Like, look, this is the home page for all my posts, okay? This would be considered the home page view. If I click into it, that's considered a detail view because it's only showing that one particular post, okay? If I click here, that's a comment action, which is, you know, you can work that into the views. So just wanted to show you that so you understand where all of this is coming from. Now we come over here and that's now they're saying that in our poll application, we're essentially going to have an index page in our views. So this is going to display the latest few questions. We're going to have a detail page which is going to display a text with no results, but with a form to vote. So when you click, so like you come in, you have a bunch of questions, you click on a question and then boom, it has like ability to vote it up and down. Okay. I assume. And, uh, we have a question results page. So it's going to display the result for a particular question. How did that question do? How many votes it got? And then we have vote action. So handles voting for a particular choice in a particular question. Okay, cool. All right. So now we kind of know that we're going to be creating like these things. Okay. Uh, we're going to be creating an index homepage, a detail and results. And also what they're saying over on this part is it's saying like, Hey man, have you ever seen really ugly URLs like this? Well, don't worry because in Django, you can make them really beautiful. So you can have them like this instead, like johnsmith.com slash news archive slash 2018 slash two or slash February, whatever. And you can make them look really nice. How does it work? It works off of URL confs or your URL configuration mapping. Okay. So you map URL patterns to views. So somebody goes to this URL, it knows which view to run. All right, so now we're gonna write more views. Okay, so we're gonna write these guys here. Again, I'm just gonna copy it and talk about it. For you, I encourage you to type it all out and walk through it, okay? I'm just gonna highlight the main part. So I'm gonna go in my poll slash views.py. So in polls, I'm gonna go inside of views, or actually we're gonna leave the index for now. Paste it here, okay. So now we got detail, we got results, and we got vote. Deed, everything always takes in a request object, okay? A request is passed whenever you do anything. Um, I'm not gonna touch on it too much right now, but this is a first parameter you kind of always put in. And then as your second parameter, we're putting in the specific question ID. This way we can look up that particular question from the database. So let's say you wanted to look up a, a blog post, right? So you have multiple blog posts. You wanna be able to look up a specific one. Well, we're gonna use ID for that. And in this case, our ID is our primary key and that will allow us to look up that unique thing. Or in Instagram's case, it allowed us to look up that unique post. Okay, cool. Now what we want to do is wire these new views into the polls.urls module by adding the following path calls. Okay. So that's what it's showing here. I'm going to call, 
I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it into our pull slash urls.py. I'm going to go and slash urls and paste it here. All right, so what does this mean? If you just go to slash polls, right? So johnsmith.com slash polls, it's going to run this thing. It's going to match the empty pattern after polls. Um, and then it's going to run the views.index function. Okay. If you go to poll slash, if you want to go to something like poll slash five or Instagram post slash whatever your post is, right? If you want to be able to do that, you want a pattern that can match that. Okay. So if I put in 20, it shouldn't break. If I put in eight, it shouldn't break. It should always be matched. And so how we can do that is we basically do this thing with angle brackets and do int colon question underscore ID. And this can dynamically match whatever pattern you put in. And another beautiful thing, you guys, usually for URL mapping, you have to deal with ugly regular expressions, except for the latest Django, you don't have to worry about regular expressions anymore. So for example, let's say you wanted to match this particular pattern. Well, you can put this in and if somebody puts in a five here, right, it'll automatically know that it's an integer and work. If they put in something else, it might freak out, okay? So it's really smart. And then it says, hey, if somebody goes to a URL like this, automatically takes them to the detail view. And if somebody goes to a URL that ends in a results like this, then um, which is essentially what you're saying here, hey, any number followed by results, take them to the results one and any number followed by the word vote, take them to the vote view. Cool. And uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to run, I'm going to do Python manage.py run server. Cool. And I will open up my Chrome and we will go to this guy over here. Okay. So now we're getting an error is because we actually have to go to that particular URL. So in this case, let's go to slash polls and it should run our index function. So I'm going to do slash polls. Boom. It ran our index function. What does our index function say? Let's go to our views. And that's what it says. Hello world, you're at the polls index. Perfect. Well, what if somebody goes to poll slash five or poll slash 193? What happens then? It'll take us to the detail function. And what does the detail function say? It says you're looking at question number with the question ID. Cool. So let's try and let's see what happens. I'm going to do 193. Okay. So the cool thing here that's happening is that you're able to take what's in the URL and you're able to pass it down to your HTML. So right here, that 193, right? If I make it like some other crazy number, it'll pass that down here, right? So now we're able to actually take in arguments from our URL and use them in our code. What if I said something like this? It'll say, hey, that pattern actually is not matched. So that's exactly what we wanted. If you don't put in a number here, it should automatically detect it. Now, if you want to go to something like slash poll slash a number slash results, what do you do? Okay, so let's say I have this number and I go to results just like that. And now it should say something like you're looking at the results of question followed by whatever it is. Okay. So you're looking at the results of question at right or a question two. And then if you go and try to do this thing with vote, you're going to get the same thing. So if I go to my URLs, it says, Hey, go to slash poll slash number slash vote. So we're going to do slash poll slash number slash vote. I'm going to hit enter and it says you're voting on question two. Perfect. That's exactly what we should be getting here. And it's looking great. All right. So it's saying, Hey, like take a look at this in your browser and it'll display the placeholders. And that's exactly what it did. And how does it work? Well, uh, detail our function that we have, uh, will take in a request object followed by the question ID. So when we pass in the question ID to be 193, right? this part became 193. And this part is just that request object. So what they have here. 
Again, if you're confused about objects and what the hell's going on, it's not completely necessary, but you should look at some object-oriented programming stuff, okay? And I do have a course on object-oriented programming, and you could comment on it if you're interested. All right, so the question ID is equal to 34 comes from this thing, and I've explained that to you already. When you put that in the URL, uh, this dynamically actually pulls it out. And once it dynamically pulls it out, because you see it says here, it says question ID, question ID. That's where it's actually pulling it from, okay? And um, that's essentially it. And then it says, hey, you don't need to do ugly things like latest.html because it's not necessary and it's apparently silly, okay? So don't do it. And you should write views that actually do something. And here they're saying, hey, look, each view is responsible for doing one of two things. Either it should return what it's supposed to return or give you like a 404, and then the rest is up to you. So, you know, basically you can have a view, or it can read records from a database, so meaning reading records, reading posts from a database, so Instagram posts, Facebook posts, or it can generate PDF files or output XML or create a zip file on the fly, anything you want, and pretty much using whatever Python libraries you want, because Django is 100% Python, so you have full Python power. And then all Django wants is that HTTP response, okay? So you can't return it as a string, you can't return it, you have to return it as some kind of an HTTP response or throw an exception, okay? So now here's what they're doing. They're like, all right, we're gonna do something cool. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take like all of the questions you have, we're gonna order it by the publication date and then show the top five most recent ones, okay? How are they doing that? Well, I'm gonna copy this and then we're gonna play around with it, okay? So we're gonna go back to our thing and what do they have here? From dot models import questions and they're in our poll slash views. Okay, so this is one thing that we need to do from dot models import question because we don't have that. So we're gonna paste it in here. And then they want us to redefine our index, okay? So we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna change my definition of what my index function is. All right, so how is this working? Well, question dot objects that order by, and what this thing does is it'll take all your questions and order it by something. So in our models, if you look, we have this thing publication date, so pub underscore date. So we're gonna order it by publication date. Now, what we're doing with this minus sign is we're saying in the reverse order, okay? So instead of the oldest um, publication dates and showing us in the oldest way, we wanted to show it in a descending order. So we wanted to show us the recent ones first. And then what we're doing is that we're just, and so this will return to us a list, okay? And then you can index a list in Python by doing this, and we're just saying give us the first five. So from zero uh, up to, but not including five. So zero, one, two, three, four, that's five, okay? And then as output, we're saying, hey, uh, join all of them, all of the questions by a comma, okay? so. If you wanna know a little bit more about like how the Python is working in there. So here we're doing um, a list comprehension and uh, you can read more about list comprehensions if you don't know what that is. It's not too important. And it's just a cool way of, of writing this, you know, instead of multiple lines, you just write in one line. And we're just saying uh, for each question, give us its text. That's all we're saying. And then we're saying join it all by commas. So that's how it's gonna output it. So it's gonna return to us um, pretty much a string, okay? And then we want to return that, okay, uh, as our output. So we're just gonna do HTTP response output, that's it. So now let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna save it and we're gonna go to our thing and uh, we'll try to go to our index. And where's our index? It's just that slash polls, okay? That should trigger our index. And let's see what happens. So I hit enter, and it shows me all my questions. So if you remember, I created three questions. What's cracking? What's new? What's up? And it's showing us with separated by a comma. 
I could do show it to us separated by three stars. If I refresh, it separates it by three stars. You could separate it by an image, whatever you want. You know, this is just pure Python. Okay, so that's essentially it. But there's something wrong here. And the thing that's actually wrong here is like, look, you're not going to have your toilet and your refrigerator in the same room, right? You're muddying the water. Just like that, you don't want to have your HTML code and your Python in the same place. We want to kind of separate it out. So right now, the design of our page is in the same place that handles our logic, okay? So what we want to do is handle our logic by pure Python in one place and all our HTML and the design of the page should be outside of this logic, okay? So we want to create something for that. So what we're going to do and what this tutorial tells us to do is inside polls, you want to create a new folder and you want to call this folder templates. This is important. The case sensitivity of this is important as well as the name. So if you mess up the name or you put a typo, you're going to kind of get messed up here. Also, pay attention to the order of all this. Okay, so under my site, so under polls, you're going to have templates. And then inside of templates, you want to create a new folder and you want to call it polls. All right. And inside of this is where you're going to throw all your HTML files. So we're going to create, we're going to create a new file in here and we're going to call it index.html. Okay. So just in slow motion for you, polls, templates, polls, index. Okay. So essentially it's like polls, templates, polls, index like that. All right. Let's go back to our tutorial. And that's what it's saying. It's saying that, hey, Django will automatically look for it and find these templates. And uh, essentially to Django, the path will look like poll slash index.html because of how Django uh, works and looks for these. And you can override it and do all kinds of advanced stuff. You know, if you want to read more into that, we're going to just uh, kind of keep it a little bit basic so everybody can follow. All right, and now we're going to put the following code into um, into that template. So it's telling us which file to put that code in. So I'm just going to hit this button, copy this code, and uh, we're going to go into our index.html, and I will paste it right over here, okay? What is this code saying? It's saying, hey, if there are any questions, then I want you to create an unordered list. Okay, that's what a UL tag is in HTML. And then what I want you to say is for a question. And so for any questions, I want you to put it as like a bullet point and show that question. Okay. Uh, and link to that particular question. Otherwise, say that there are no polls available. So if we didn't have any questions at all, it'll say no polls available and then end the if statement. Okay. So we're starting our for loop here. We're ending it here. We start our if statement here. And then we have our else statement here and we have our end if here. All right, so that's cool. Now we wanna make sure that we actually link to this index uh, a.html file. How are we gonna do that? Here's how. Now let's update our index view in pulse slash views at py to use the template, okay? So we're gonna do just that. And also let's update our index function just a little bit. So here's a few lines that we're adding. Let's go back to our views and uh, we will, so latest question, we'll keep that and we'll just paste this in here. All right, save. So what's going on? We're still getting those re most recent five questions, but uh, that's what la latest question list is gonna become. And if you don't have five questions, they'll pick the top three or top uh, or the re recent most four, okay? Something like that. And then what we're doing is we're loading that template, poll slash index.html, okay? So we're using loader. Um, and then there's something called context dictionary in Django. And what you can do is you can pass from the back end server side, pass this to your front end, so your HTML code it'll know about it, okay? So if I go back to our templates, my index.html, how is it getting access to this variable latest question list? Well, we're actually passing it in our context, all right? That's, that's what's going on. 
And then we're saying, as HTTP response, template.render, we're saying, hey, um, send that context with that request and send it over to the HTML file. So it sends all that over to the HTML file and then our HTML file has access to that latest question, okay? And this weird stuff you're seeing here with this, with a percent sign squiggly bracket, that's Django templating uh, engine, okay? So it's basically HTML with a little Django pizzazz. Cool. And so now they're like, hey, this is such a common step to load a template and then to do template.render that they're, they made a shortcut for it, which is just render. So how can you use that? Like this, okay? So basically, you can remove this line. You don't need this line anymore. And thanks to this line at the top from Django.shortcuts import render, which you should have, we're going to use this render. And how are we going to do it? We can just replace all of this and we can say render. The first argument is request, okay? And then after that, the path to that index file. So polls slash index.html, just like that, followed by the context dictionary. So in this case, we're just calling it context, okay? Sometimes what I like to call this is stuff for uh, front end, all right? Just to keep it consistent. And just so you know, the thing that you're accessing on the back end is not this guy. It's the dictionary, context dictionary key. So it's actually this string, all right? And that's what will give you back this guy. Okay. So note that once we've done all this in views, we no longer need to import loader, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. That's what we did. And now they're going to show us how to raise a 404 error. All right. So what happens if it doesn't exist so let's tackle the question detail view the page that displays the question text for a given poll here's the view so in poll slash views at py what we're going to do is we're going to from django.http import http 404 so since we're already using django.http to import http response we're also going to say http 404 okay just like that we're going to save it and then we're going to come back and now it wants us to make changes to our detail view and it's saying, Hey, turn it into this. So let's turn it into that and I'm going to save it. So, uh, try accept blocks. All it does is if there is an error, try accept blocks, will catch it. Okay. Try accept block. It is pretty much the same thing as if then condition, except that if you're running into some kind of crazy error, try accept blocks will catch it and still run. For example, if you divided a number by zero in Python, your code will just freaking crash, right? It'll give you this red blob, your app will crash, whatever you're doing. But if you run a try accept block that says, if you get a zero division error, then just pass, you'll not get that error, it'll just pass it. Okay, so what we're saying is we're saying try to get that particular, that one specific question, okay? So we're saying, we're getting that question ID and we're saying get that object that has that primary key or that question ID or where that primary key is equal to the question ID. So if I pass in a URL like um, app.com slash polls slash six, right? What it's going to do, or let's say slash two, what it'll do is pass this two in to here that this will become two. And the question will get the question object that has an ID of two. In this case, it might be one of my questions that, that I think is what's new, right? My what's new question. So then this question will become the what's new question object. And um, then what we do is that we just return that, okay? And we pass it in our context dictionary and we pass that question in here. Except if the question does not exist, then we raise HTTP four and we say question does not exist. Okay, cool. Let me make sure to delete that. That's not supposed to be there. I just added that to show you guys what's up. Okay. Uh, the new concept here, the view raises. Yep. We'll discuss what you could put in that poll slash detail that HTML template a bit later, but if you'd like to 
quickly get the above example working a file containing just this um okay so we're gonna get that thing working okay so in here we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna call it uh, detail.html and in detail we're just gonna put question just like that okay so now we got to make it work and we're going to go and get our question too. Okay. So because that specific question exists, look, it says what's new. Now, if I change this ID to one, it's going to get the question that was what's up. If I change it to three, it's going to be the what's cracking. But what happens if I change it to four? Remember, I only created three questions. If I change it to four, it says page not found. And look, the error it throws up is question does not exist. Now, if we didn't have that, right, if we actually don't have that, so let's go back to our views and um, I'll just remove this and I'll just say, instead of raise, I'll just say pass, okay? Pass is the equivalent of saying ignore to Python. Let's go back, let's refresh. We're gonna get this ugly error, which we don't actually know what to do with or what it means and it is very confusing. But when we have this, when we raise this thing and I refresh, you see it says question does not exist. So it's a lot easier for us to see what the problem is. And because we know it's coming from here, then we can like start debugging and know what's going on. Okay, so that's why that particular thing is important. All right, let's move on along. All right, so a shortcut. So instead of having this try accept thing or raise, we can actually do a cute shortcut that says get object or 404. And that's a method that's in, Py uh, in Django. It comes with it. So we'll throw that and it's in our shortcuts. So from Django.shortcuts, import render and actually import get object or 404, okay? And just to stay consistent with them, we'll do it in this because it starts with the G and starts with R, so alphabetical orders and pep eight and okay. All right, so we're gonna go here. We will go to where it says question in detail and we're gonna remove this whole thing, okay? Make our life easier. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say, ba bam, right? We're gonna say, hey, get object or 404. So that particular question with the primary key of this, if it doesn't exist, then it'll automatically say it doesn't exist. And then pretty much the last line will keep it what it was. We'll save this. And basically as our context dictionary, we're saying, pass the question as a question, okay? So there are three arguments in here. Request, the HTML, pass the HTML file as a string, and then a dictionary, so then we can use it on our backend. Uh, again, in our detail HTML, we can actually use, we can see that question. Save, and now let's try to go to it again. So I'll say four. And now look, it says no question, no question matches the given query. Question as in like no question object, okay? But if I do three, it finds us and takes us to it. So this is what we mean. This is what I mean when I say Python is really, uh, Django is really awesome. It comes with a lot of intelligent defaults, whereas you don't have to write a lot of, a lot of this code, right? It works on that dry principle. Do not repeat yourself. And a lot of these things just, come built in out of the box and it, it speeds up your development time, saves you a lot of those new code lines because every new code line that you write, there's an additional chance for an error. So the amount of code lines that you can reduce, the less errors you will make. Plus your code just looks beautiful and so much more readable, right? Get object or 404 instead of try da 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 except object dot does not exist, right? So it's confusing. Okay, let's go on. Get object or 404. This is some advanced stuff. We're going to skip that for now. Now it says use the template system. So in our detail.html, we're going to go and I'm going to paste that there, save it. And uh, let's see what it's saying. Back to the detail view for our poll application. Here's what it should look like. Okay, so now let's go to the detail and let's see. First, let's just see what the result is, right? And then we'll talk about it. I'll hit enter. 
what's cracking. It's showing it to me in a nicer way. Let's do two. It's showing it to me in a nicer way. What happens if I do four? Same thing. No question matches the given query. Okay, so what are they doing here? They take your particular question and they wrap it up in a H1 tag in HTML. Anything that's an H1 tag will make, it's called heading one. And you can go all the way down to heading six, heading six being the smallest, heading one being the biggest, boldest. So we have it in heading one. And then right underneath it, we say for choice in question uh, dot choice underscore set dot all. So for all of the choices, as like at choices as in the particular answers you can have to each question, right? Those, those answers are the ones that actually get an upvote or uh, there's no downvote, so an upvote. Show me all of those answers, except in this case, we don't have um, any answers or any choices. So that's why it's not showing those. How is it working? The template system uses dot lookup syntax. So you'll do question dot question text. So it'll go into the question and then it'll access the question underscore text. Another thing to notice if you're more advanced, if the question underscore text attribute did not exist, it would go and try to access it as a list index. Okay. So imagine if it was like, if you did question dot zero or something like that. So you, you're still using dot notation. So that's something that could trip you up later. Okay. Uh, it would have tried a list index lookup. Okay. And then um, method calling happens in the for loop. So this for loop method calling is happening there because you know, you're doing question dot choice underscore set dot all. Okay. Um, and then it's interpreted as Python code, which is cool, like right here. And it returns an iterable of choice objects. And then we iterate over it, right? So that's why we use a for loop and then we iterate over it. Now, Remember when we wrote the link to a question, the poll slash index.html. So let's go to our poll slash index.html. You can see what we did here, right? So we said slash. So for the links, we said slash polls slash this, right? So let's go take a look at this page one more time. We're going to go right here and I'm just going to hit polls and hit enter. So you can see how it's showing me what's cracking, what's new, what's up. So each of this, and when you click into it, you go into its detail view, right? Kind of like when you click into a blog post. And also under what's up, you can actually see the choices. So that's just the recent thing we just added, right? So how is that working? How are we linking it? And how we're linking it, we're saying slash polls slash that question ID, which matches one of the paths in our URLs.py. So if I take you to my URLs, it'll match the path of this guy. And that takes you to the detail view. And that's how we can see the detail view. So let's go back. But we're hardwiring the URL paths. This way, if we have a lot of URL paths, our logic can get messed up. Or if we change, if we go in our URLs.py and I, I don't know, change this path to be something else, right? It has like, uh, it says polls here again, followed by something else, it could like mess us up. So what we want to do is we want to use it in a dynamic way. So that's what they're showing us here. So they're saying, Hey, replace this guy with this guy. So we're going to do just that. Okay. So we're going to go back to our index.html and we will just do this. Okay. So now what this is saying is, for the URL, use detail, detail as in this, that's where we're getting the name from. And then as the argument, pass in the question dot ID. So this question, since we're looping over it, if you do question dot, use a dot notation, it'll get you that particular questions ID. So question dot ID, that's what you pass in as the argument. And so then when you go to your URLs to this question ID, that's what it's going to pass. Okay. That's essentially it. And I believe you should also be able to do question underscore ID equals uh, that. But in this case, we're just going to keep it like this. Okay. So no need for um, keyword arguments. Okay. And then in, in between here, so that's what it's going to link to 
it's going to link to the detail view of that particular question. And the text that we're generating is just from uh, right here. So that's question dot question underscore text. If you are confused by this, look up stuff on HTML, okay, and look up how links work in HTML. Again, I'm not going to go into too much HTML because that's outside the scope of this tutorial. Okay. okay, and that's how it's essentially working. Now, namespacing URL names, it's basically just telling us like, hey, look. So let's go down over here. Uh, let's just make sure we're not missing anything, okay, from the top. Okay, so you're saying if you want to change the URL to something else, perhaps to something like poll slash specific slash 12. So this is something that I've already said, but but they're just reiterating here and, and they're saying, hey, like if you change the URL, it's still gonna work now that we change it to be the dynamic way, okay? So now we can change our URL pattern to whatever. Uh, and it's not hardwired anymore. And uh, now they're talking about namespacing URL names, okay? So this way you want to make sure that all of your apps actually have, there's no way for like right now we only have the polls app, right? But what if we wanted to have more apps inside of this, then what could happen is that if any of our HTML files name matched, so let's say you have a polls app and it has an index.html file, right? What if you had a blog app and that also had an index.html file? Now you're going to have a collision. So what we do for that, that's a, that's a reason why we create under templates, another folder called polls. And if we wanted to add templates for a blogging app, that's why we would have an app called blog. And then under that we'd have templates. And then under that we'd have blog. And then under that uh, would put our HTML stuff. Okay. That's the reason why we do it like that. And this way there's going to be no collisions. Okay. Now change your poll slash index.html. So let's see what it's saying here. So we can have our app name, app underscore name, um, app underscore name is equal to poll. So this is in our urls.py. So let's go right there, urls.py. And they're saying, hey, add that guy right over here. Okay. And pretty much everything else we wanna just leave as is. Now change your poll slash index.html template from this to this. So in our index.html, we're gonna go right here and we're gonna paste that guy. So notice the difference. All we did is we do polls equals de uh, polls colon detail, okay? That's really the only difference. There's no other difference. I'm gonna save that. And this way, our URLs will never collide and everything has a proper uh, name spacing, right? Because right now we created a detail for our polls. What if you wanna create, um, if, what if you had to add a new app called blog and then create details in there? You don't want it to just be called detail because it's gonna collide with the polls detail. But now because it's polls colon detail, then later you could do blog colon detail or Instagram post colon detail or Facebook status colon detail. And this way you can differentiate all of those different apps you have within one of your Django projects. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. That's it for this video. I do got to let you know that we do have our flagship course called the profitable programmer coming up. That's to help you become a web developer, become a badass in Python and Django and everything to do with becoming a web developer as you know, as a Python web developer. And uh, we also show you how to get clients and earn an income and much more in depth. Okay. There, we're also going to go deep into Django and help you create apps and host them online. So if you are interested in this, please go to this link over here and uh, join our VIP waitlist. And as my bonus to you, I'm going to give to you uh, your Python earning potential calculator. And it's really cool. I'm going to give you that for free. Okay, so go to that link right now. 
and uh, join the VIP waitlist. With that said, that's it, and I'm going to see you in the next part of this tutorial. Whoosh.